Transcripts and recordings of the podcast may not be used for any purpose without the direct written permission of the podcast owner. Welcome to Light It Up, a podcast about resilient women balancing motherhood, their careers, personal lives, and all of the challenges that come along with being a superwoman. Each week, you'll be motivated to take action, to lead, inspire, transform, and empower. Now, here's your host, Dr. Regina Mashira. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of Light It Up. I am your host, Dr. Regina Mashira. I am so excited about today's episode because I have a very special guest who is a servant leader, a servant uh, to the community, uh, Ms. Javondalyn Dunnigan, who is the founder of JMD Angels Foundation. Um, We're going to talk more about her uh, nonprofit organization and all of the great things that they've done here in the Chicagoland area. But before we get into the conversation. I just want to share just a little bit about Javondalyn's background. She earned a bachelor's degree from Hampton University in social work and a master's of social work from the University of Chicago. Uh, She's worked in um, federal law for 25 years, recently retired, and uh, but she's also been recognized uh, by numerous organizations um, here in the Chicagoland area and beyond. She was the Chicago Defender Woman of Excellence, which all of us know is a very uh, wonderful um, recognition uh, for women who are of service uh, here in, in the area. She's also been recognized by Rolling Out Magazine, Sisters with Superpowers, and she is certainly a sister with superpowers, and recognized by Delta Sigma Theta CMAC uh, Iconic 22. In addition to her service to the community and work, she's an active member of the Chicago Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. She's also the proud mother of an adult daughter. And I'm going to let Javondalyn tell us more um, about herself and how she um, came to uh, decide to found JMD Angels Foundation. So welcome to Light It Up, Javondalyn. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for this opportunity to talk about the foundation. And um, I'm just grateful to God for all of the um, honors and recognition that I've received because people don't have to recognize what you're doing. And I'm just glad um, that I, that that has happened um, and that God is really getting the glory. So um, growing up, I um, grew up in a family of servants. My grandparents, my mom um, took us to um, volunteer over the holidays with Little Brothers of the Elderly for years. And I did the same with my daughter um, growing up. And thank God she's um, truly a servant leader as well. And so in the past, you know, I always say that it doesn't take a committee to make a difference. You can get up and and serve and and just create your own um, public service um, project, I say. So what happened um, a few years ago, a couple of friends and I, it was about four people, we came together and um, collected socks for the homeless. Mm -hmm. And we did, it was just called a sock drive. This was about five or six years ago. And then during the pandemic, which what was really interesting is right when um, the pandemic started, my brother um, gave my daughter and I about, he's a business owner. So he gave both of us about three to $400 because we didn't know what was going to happen. You know, we just to have money in the house. And I sold seeds, small seeds, $50 here and there um, to my hairdresser, you know, who wasn't braiding my hair. But in November, when we opened back up, I never will forget 2020, there were four entrepreneurs, I believe, in Atlanta. They went, they pulled their money together, went to a grocery store and paid for everybody's groceries. And it really touched me. So I love to see those kinds of stories. I have a dream of being a philanthropist, even though I feel like I'm doing some of that on a smaller scale. If I had Oprah and um, Tyler Perry's money, the sky would be the limit. But anyway, after that, I said I could have a much greater impact if I start a foundation because some people want 
um, a five, you know, they want to see a 501c3. They want a tax de um, deduction, which I have no problems with. And I figured I could get sponsors and just reach um, a different, um, not so much demographic, but reach higher heights with the foundation. And that is how JMD Angels was birthed. Wow. And you, I mean, we're now in 2023 and you you birthed uh, JMD and during the height of the pandemic, when so many people um, were suffering and experiencing, um, you know, health issues, obviously, but the loneliness of being isolated and not being able to connect, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's with their loved ones or friends, and um, to have that desire to help others speaks during that time um speaks volumes of who you are um as a as a person and i do believe that you know when you are of service to others it's going to enrich your life um okay. so you know exactly exactly and so uh you started out with the sock drive mm -hmm. and it grew into so much more because I know with JMD Angels Foundation, there are various initiatives that your organization focuses on. And I believe you have four pillars with the um, food, clothing, shelter, and college scholarships. Yeah. How, how, did, how did you um, determine that those were the areas that you wanted to focus on? Well, you know, most foundations are singularly focused. And I didn't want just to have a foundation focused on scholarship because that's a long, exhausting year trying to raise money for one issue. And I wanted to be able to spring into action when something comes up. And when I say I watch Tyler Perry closely, he has his ear to and, and a pulse on what's going on across the country. So I've seen him pay for funerals. I've seen him or heard about him um, doing something, paying for an attorney. And I want to be able to, when something comes up in those four pillars, that we are able to act. That hasn't happened as yet, uh, as of yet, because of course you got to get. That's one thing you learn when you learn when you have a um, foundation. You can't just make your own decisions. You have a board. You have to vote, and everybody has to buy in. But I wanted us to have four quarters and have four areas, and our biggest area, of course, is scholarship. Um, but every quarter I tell the committee or whoever the lead is, be as creative as you can be. Let's think outside the box. We don't want to just collect clothes. What else can we do on whatever scale we can do it? Mm -hmm. and so that's how the four areas came up. Okay. And, and I love, honestly, how you have the four pillars and you, you take an initiative each quarter. So that, that, that is wonderful. And, and you're right you know, the scholarship piece, which is actually, I would imagine the largest um, area of focus because in the course of what, two and a half, almost three years, you all have awarded over $25,000 in scholarships, yes. which is, I mean, we know the cost of college. Uh, I work in higher ed, but I also have children who are in college. And full uh, disclaimer and transparency, I did not know Javon Delin until um, my son was fortunate enough to be a recipient in 2022. And then my daughter applied uh, in 2023 and was able to um, be a recipient of a scholarship. So we are certainly uh, grateful uh, to your foundation. And I know the countless students and families that you all have helped are grateful because every bit helps. Yes. So how, how many scholarships, um, what is the goal? Do you set out for a goal uh, with your goal of saying we want to award X number of scholarships are is the goal to double what you award for each year. So the funny part is, um, the first year, you know, of course, um, meager beginnings. Um, we had maybe twenty five hundred dollars, and true story, we had identified first generation college students. We could hardly find students. It was the strangest thing, and they were for freshman year. 
first generation. Well, this young man that we did give the money to turned it in. He was a second year first generation student, but all of the other five students that turned in their applications, they did not meet the criteria, missed um, turning in certain aspects of the um, application. So what he did was say, I'm going to take my chance. And you know what we decided? We were going to give him a scholarship. Right. So I love that he took that chance because it worked out for him. Mm -hmm. The first year, I think we gave out $2,500 or maybe $1,000, but we left the rest of the money to roll over to the next year because it really was intended for first generation. The next year, we um, we raised, I think, about $7,000 or $7,800 or $7,000, let's say. And I said, let's try to do um, a quick fundraiser by just asking people to help us reach our goal. And then we gave out $8,800. Now, this is a true story. We literally empty, almost emptied our bank account mm. <laughs> because we it was we had maybe 32 applicants at that time. Wait till you hear what happened this year. So we literally tried to give every amount of money we had. And we were grateful for our donors. Small change helps. It really did. Small donations came in. Then the, this year, we had 62 applications. And I'm going to tell you why. I believe um, we are growing and people believe in us. People have said to me, they appreciate the transparency because we do publicly post and we're excited. The schools that the students go to, how much we gave, we always tell how much we raise. We know that information is public knowledge as far as how much a um, foundation raises, but I have been giving money for years, small amounts um, to different, and I want to know where my money is going. Right. So a friend of mine from high school joined my board. She had been donating, donating. She said, because I believe in what you're doing. So this year we had 62 applications. And I know what that speaks to. People know we're giving the money. We're raising it and they know we're giving it out. Mm -hmm. So we interviewed, I think, 32 students um, because, of course, students didn't turn in some things on um, within the time frame. And in the course of two and a half years, raising $25,300 in addition to a, 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 um, I'm sorry, a double good fundraiser, which was really successful, we have awarded 19 scholarships. So on average, about $1,500. Yeah. And we don't set an amount up front. We set how much we have to give, but I let my um, scholarship committee decide based on the circumstances. May, one student might get 500 and we we'll reward them for whatever. And then somebody might have more of a need. And it's not just that if it's a two-parent household and they have a ton of money. I mean, we look at everything. Yeah. We, we have a phenomenal committee. That's and, awesome. Thank you. And I know that you all to to continue to be able to award scholarships to your students uh, or to to students that uh, you all have a fundraiser that is coming up this Sunday, September twenty fourth. Yes. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about that and how we can support and and I believe if I'm not mistaken. You're also highlighting uh, individuals who have been of service to the community. So why don't you talk about um, the categories in which you're also highlighting those individuals at the gala? Okay, thank you so much. So this is the part that I just love. Um, those unsung heroes that are in our community doing the work in um, various areas. And so what we wanted to do, of course, was to raise money for our programs, primarily scholarship, and we wanted to recognize angels. So we created um, uh, educator category, first responder, and a caregiver category. Our um, nominations were so phenomenal, so we decided this year to give two, for our first time, we did, we're giving two educator awards, two um, first responder, and one caregiver. The caregiver um, award is to a lady that has stepped in and helped um, families for respite care, um, people that, and she was one of my mother's um, caregivers. I had, um, I didn't nominate her obviously because I'm the mm -hmm. board president, but um, she was just phenomenal for a lot of them. She received two people, two families um, nominated her. We have, um, that's Diana Starks. We have Dr. Waldo Johnson. He is a phenomenal um, mentor and professor, now vice provost at the University of Chicago. We have a firefighter, um, Christopher Skeins, who um, saved a young boy's life at one time. He is a mentor to many um, in the fire academy. Um, we have Dr. Dawn Williams. She is a uh, physician um, 
assistant and she does ministry work, um, medical ministry work at her church and has an outreach program that she um, conducts. And then we also have um, Tracy uh, Pace Arnold. She has a daycare called Heaven's Angels. And this woman sounds phenomenal. I can't wait to meet her too. Okay. She um, helps the parents, the parents drive so far to drop them off mm -hmm. um, or to go to work. Then she will comb the hair, kind of do the extra things once she drops them off. She may feed or bathe them before the parent gets there, prepares meals to help them on the commute. As a single parent, when I had my daughter, that would have helped me tremendously. Yes. So all five of our angels, um, the um, nomination information was just phenomenal. And it was an, uh, an easy yet a hard uh, mm -hmm. decision because we had um, several um, nominations to come in. And this is, you mentioned, this is your first gala. It's our first one. And we exactly. have, um, so far we have about a hundred tickets sold. So it's going to be a, a big event. And um, Anita Blanton, Fox 32 News anchor, is going to be the MC for our awards segment. Awesome. Now, how can people um, purchase tickets? Where's the event going to be held? Give us all of the details so that we can support um, to help make sure that uh, you reach your goal for, for the foundation. Thank you. Um, so next Sunday, September 24th, it will be at Guild Row, 3130 North Rockwell. Um, we have adequate street parking in the area. It'll be from 3 to 7 p.m. You can um, go to my website, jmdangelsfoundation.com, and there will be a pop-up right there for an Eventbrite link. And the tickets are $75 um, in advance or $85 at the door. We have um, a wonderful DJ. Um, we have um, a great soul food menu. Um, so it'll be a really nice, we have some vendors, we'll have some auction um, items if people would like to, the, au auction or raffle items, however you want to look at them. So it's going to be a very nice um, night of entertainment. Um, and we ask that you um, come in cocktail attire. You don't have to wear a long gown, but it is a dressy affair. All right. Well, I always need a reason to uh, get dress dressed up. up so uh, that is perfect. Now, um, with the scholarships being, you know, the the biggest area of focus, at what um, part of the year and what are you doing as far as the clothing and shelter aspect? Because I know that is also, I remember hearing some stories about, you know, different initiatives that were focused on that, that particular um, area. Yes, so we, doing? we just finished up food. We um, sponsored um, um, a catered meal this past Sunday at a senior facility in Bronzeville, and we played bingo and gave out prizes. So that was a really nice event. We are coming up on um, shelter, and um, it's not official yet, but we are um, talking with um, a, a, a home or a housing environment that is very similar to the Ronald McDonald House, where families come for medical care, and um, we're looking at um, doing some um, things with that environment because it is a shelter. They do um, allow people to stay there when they come in, so we're looking at that. And then clothing will come up in um, in January, in the winter months. Okay. And of course, um, in the spring is the scholarship. Right. Okay. So it's just a full full circle yes. uh, in terms of various aspects um, of of helping individuals throughout their uh live livelihood which is which is very important now your foundation i know you can't do this alone mm -hmm. and you've got some pretty awesome people who are um, a part of your foundation um can you talk just a little bit about how you all came to be i know you mentioned uh one person who was uh, a contributor who decided that they wanted to join and and help in your efforts. Yes, um, the first year people kind of said, "Oh, I want to join um, the board." And then, of course, as the second year came, and this we're now going into our third, um, year, finished wrapping up our third year. The board members are very diverse um, in a sense of um, their um, backgrounds. We have um, a juvenile probation officer. We have an attorney. 
Um, we have an, a former engineer that's retired now. Um, we have a library um, director, um, a, a lady that is an administrator at um, one of the high schools. So we have a nice um, eclectic uh, environment um, that we work from. And, and it really does help with all of the different um, backgrounds. We have a social worker, which helps. She's our new, our new vice president of the board, and she's the um, co-chair of this um, fundraising gala. So when it comes to um, a foundation, it is a lot of work and you don't want everyone to be yes people. You certainly want people to challenge you and to give pushback if necessary. And so um, we will be looking for new um, board members as some um, decide maybe to, um, to cycle off for a year or two. So we do look for people that have fundraising abilities because you need to be able to ask. That is one of the areas that I really don't like to, um, yeah. it's not my strength asking. I like to serve and and and, and get people rally um, behind that, um, behind seeing me and getting motivated. But it, it's a hard thing to do to ask, but I've learned to ask and people will say, Lynn, all you have to do is ask. I'm like, I know, I just hate rejection. Yeah, yeah. But I will say this, we do have about 35 angel volunteers that are not board members, but they're volunteers. So what I do is I send out a rally call and say, hey, this is what we need. And they will step up and show up for one of the initiatives. So that's what is um, helping to drive our success as well. Okay. Now, if someone were was interested in supporting in that way and um, to become an angel volunteer, what can they do to help? Yes, they can sign up on our foundation's um, website, jmdangelsfoundation.com, or send an email to jmdangelsfoundation at gmail.com, and I will get you signed up and added to our email list, because every quarter, we have something to do. And that's what I love as well, because there may be a project that somebody likes, and then there may be another project, and they say, well, I don't have time this quarter. I really want to work with kids. Or I want to work with seniors. So that's, I love the variety. I really do. Awesome. So as we kind of wrap up, um, I'm curious to know um, what uh, what keeps you motivated in uh, to do this work? Because it is a lot. Um, it's a lot of work. So what keeps you motivated and going? You know, I love to see um, people. I love to help people. And I love to see uh, the expressions on their faces because this, it can be the smallest thing. When I've always um, had an affinity for senior citizens. Mm -hmm. And last week, just seeing them be appreciative for a crossword puzzle book that we bought at the dollar store. Mm -hmm. And those are the little things that keep me going. It's just something about being able to um, give back. And, and help somebody. This is the social work in me. I know, I know it's, I'm an empath. Everybody says that. But, and, and I keep saying to God, I said, I know what I will do with this money if you give it to me. I will be responsible. I, I mean, it's that's what keeps me going. I just wish that I had more to do all the things that I want to do. But I understand why he has me on this assignment because a girl said to me, she said, I am so grateful for these volunteer opportunities because I don't know, I wouldn't have known how to go about volunteering. That to me, I'm like, oh, it's so many ways. I wish I had more time to do all the things I want to do, but it, it's given her an opportunity to volunteer. So that keeps me going because that means that someone else is inspired by what I'm doing. And then that's helping them maybe to get up and say, this is what, um, this is how Lynn did it, or, or maybe I can do it. I've had a few people ask me, about starting a foundation. And I give them the good, bad, and the ugly and say, hey, you know, think about these things because no one kind of told me some of the stuff um, mm -hmm. that I needed to know. And I'm learning as I go. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier um, in the conversation about wanting to be a philanthropist and you are. So mm -hmm. I, the way I see it, everyone has their, um, has their role to play, so to speak. And, you know, as as you continue in this work, I can see that uh, great things are going to continue to happen 
Thank and, you. and, and you're going to reach those goals that you have set for, for JMD Angels Foundation. So thank you. And thank you for this opportunity. Um, actually, this is my first interview. Is it? The very first talking oh. about JMD Angels Foundation. Yes, the very first. Well, it will not be your last <laughs> because um I I've got I've got some uh some information and I'm going to share with you even more so that we can make sure that you have uh, some additional opportunities if I can be of assistance um, in any way, because um, I will say, I think I, I got this honestly. Um, I'm about connecting good people to other good people. So there's a way for me to connect you. And there is, uh, I'm going to do that. And that is something that I, I honestly, I got from my dad, uh, my late father, who um, hosted a television program for over 30 years. He had his own talk show. I uh, remember. Yeah. You know how I remember because my mother was an activist <laughs> and that is who I am <laughs> and my bloodline. And I remember watching. Oh, wow. I remember. Yes. 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 So say no more, say less, as they say. <laughs> Um, but I'm honored. Thank you. Um, I'm honored that uh, your first experience talking about uh, your organization in, in this aspect was with me. So thank yes. you for mm -hmm. uh, giving me that honor. Um, so before we go, though, I want to make sure that folks know how to uh, where they can go to purchase a ticket for the gala on Sunday, September 24th. So if you could give us that information again and remind us again of where it will be held, um, we'll make sure um, folks can come out and support. All right. Thank you again. Um, JMDAngelsFoundation.com is our website and there is a pop up as soon as you log on. And it will send you to the link for the event, Bright. Thank awesome. you. I cannot say thank you enough. I will always remember my first interview. Oh, thank you so very much. It was such a pleasure having you on this week's episode of Light It Up. And then, and this, I'm going to extend another invitation so that you can come back and talk about, because this isn't the only thing that you do with JMD Angels Foundation. So we'll um, make sure that there's another opportunity for us to connect again on Light It Up Podcast. But thank you so much for being um, an amazing guest. And thank, thank you, you for all that you do because okay. you truly have blessed uh, my family as well. You know, I'm a divorced mom of three with two children in college. And um, we are truly grateful uh, to your foundation. So thank you so much. You. Um, continue to... Um, be inspired and motivated to do the work of being of service and good to others. So thank you. Thank you. And you have two amazing young people and we are glad to say that they're JMD Angel recipients. Thank yes. you so much. So thank you everyone for tuning in to this week's episode of Light It Up. Make sure you go and purchase those tickets uh, to JMD um, Foundation's first gala. Um, to support uh, the efforts of uh, awarding scholarships to our young people to pursue their dreams of earning a college degree. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to Light It Up Podcast. Share this episode with a friend and come back and join us next week to see what very interesting guests that I have on Light It Up. So until next time, remember to continue to light it up and shine bright like a diamond. Thanks for joining me this week on Light It Up. Make sure you visit my website at www.lightituppodcast.com or www.ajinamohammed.com. You can also find me on social media using the handle at Light It Up Podcast. If you like what you've heard, please be sure to hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, I'd appreciate a rating on iTunes, or you can simply tell a friend about the show. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for a new episode. Until next time, light it up and shine bright like a diamond.